-hmm. Amazing sight, the Savior stands and knocks on every door. He has 10,000 blessings in his hand to satisfy the poor. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, the, the first Sunday in, in Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Prayerfully, you got an, uh, an earlier amen. I would start this morning, Let's get that hour back, amen, in the fall. But we are thankful to God to be alive and, and the blood still running warm in our veins. God is so awesome, sister and brother. He blesses us beyond measure. And I know, I know you're like me. You know that, that you've been blessed beyond measure, far more than what you deserve, far more than what you deserve. It's kind of like, amen, every, every minister, amen, every individual that's been called, amen, by God, well, regardless of the calling, you always feel inadequate, inadequate. And just like right now, knowing that God has blessed us, amen, so much, so much, it causes us to feel, amen, as as. As Jacob would say, as Jacob would say, Lord, I am not worthy of the least of thy mercies. God had blessed him and he had been gone from home for 20 years. Samantha Moore, good morning. On his way back home, he stopped and, and, and just before he, amen, lay down and go to sleep and wrestle with an angel, amen, he prays to God and says, amen, to God, Lord, you've been good to me. And somebody can join Jacob this morning. If you can join Jacob this morning, amen, raise your hand, he, amen, tell God you've been good to me. You blessed me beyond measures. And, and because you keep on blessing me and I'm, I'm still not doing all that you require me, Sister Gross, good morning. Amen. Still it is by your mighty powerful hand. And I say to you, Lord, I'm not worthy of the least of thy mercies. Good morning, sister and brother. We acknowledge God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To all of God's children. In the clergy, we thank you for joining us. And the deacon and deaconess, thank the Lord for you. Deaconess Samantha Moore so far. Amen. Thank the Lord for you. Martise Wood, good morning. Um, my Lord, my Lord. Uh, we acknowledge all ministers' wives. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. David Ham is live now, sisters and brothers. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord, as we acknowledge ministers' wives. Thank the Lord for my wife who labor day in and day out. Amen. Sisters and brothers, it's a blessing to have somebody that will share with you when everybody else turn their backs on you. So I thank the Lord for, amen, for my wife. Good morning, Sister Prather. I thank the Lord for you, you and your family, all of God's children this morning, whoever you are, wherever you're from. And I won't keep doing, amen, protocol, but I do want you to know we are so blessed. We are so blessed. Sister and brother, this, this thing is, is amen. Mm, hallelujah. God is holding you in the hollow of his mighty powerful hand. You and I know better than those folks that have already been called from labor to refreshment. But by the mighty power of God, amen. I take, amen, Bridget Bateman Reed, whose husband, amen, gone on to be with the Lord. Lula Thornton's husband, amen, who's gone on to be with the Lord. And there are, there are many others. I thank the Lord for each of you this morning as we come for our Sunday school lesson this morning. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning that, amen, our coming together be not in vain, but that in this period of study that you will guide us, amen, open our minds and our, our understanding. Lord, give us that, amen, that mind to do your will. And as we do your will, Lord, have us to know that even though we know and believe your word, that still obedience is better than sacrifice. Bless us in this period of study. So much so, Lord, that, amen, we will not waste time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sunday school lesson this morning, sisters and brothers. Amen. Uh, still in the Old Testament. Still in the Old Testament. Good morning, Sister Prather and Sister Pickett. Good morning. Um, as we acknowledge, as we acknowledge all of God's children, all of God's children. Our lesson this morning is, amen, it's for Sunday, March 14th, 2021. In this first quarter of the year of 2021, amen, it is lesson 11. The subject of this lesson is making wise choices. Making wise choices, wise, wise choices. 
Amen. Good morning, Shayla. Amen. Um, making wise, wise, wise choices. We we all make choices, but what kind of choices? This this talks about wise choices. Um, the background scripture is Joshua chapter five, verses thirteen through into chapter six and verse twenty seven. The printed passage is Joshua chapter 5, verses 13, verse 13 through chapter 6, verse 5. Then we got 15, verse 15 through 16, and verse 20. The key verse for this lesson, good morning, Deacon Moore. The key verse for this message, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of Elah. In Joshua 6 and 2, King James Version. Let us get into our lesson. Uh, the introduction, uh, I, as always, I want to read from mm, the teacher's book, that introduction. Amen. Mm, that's so, so important. To, 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 amen. In the teacher's book, the introduction in the teacher's, teacher's book says, The Bible has much to say about obedience to God. Mm -hmm. The book of Deuteronomy that teaches to obey God and to be blessed or disobey God and be, amen, cursed. Uh, that's the 11th chapter of, of Joshua, of Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, 26 and verses 26 through 28. Believers are called to live obediently in Jesus Christ, which is, can be based on, amen, John 14 and 23. To obey God is to hear, understand, and follow the will of God. Good morning, Costello Warren. While listeners, while believers are not justified on their ability to obey, obedience is an act of worship of God as it demonstrates love of God. God rewards those who obey him. To disobey God is a journey into sin. Obedience is difficult, and it is sometimes. And, and, and the reason, let me pause. And the reason it is so, so, amen, difficult is because where we are living. Remember, it is by nature we are sinners. And since we are by nature, it's naturally, amen, easier for us to do wrong than it is to do right. Mm. Each of us, let me continue, each of us is human and born into a sinful world, raised in sin, surrounded by the world. Obedience was literally a life and death matter, amen, for the early Israelites as they journeyed into the promised land. Only as they followed God were they victorious, beyond any strategy they could have employed was their obedience to God a victory. Mm. Was their obedience to God a victory? It seemed that, and let me, let me adjust my seating. Amen. Okay. All right. So let me, let me go to, amen, our Sunday school lesson. Making choices. Making wise choices. We all make choices. But how wise what, how wise are the choices we make? And let me, let me, the introduction, amen, from the Sunday school book. Human beings have very little power. Mm -hmm. Though we make plans for things we intend to do for the following day, we lack the power to guarantee that the next day is promised. Y'all listening? Amen. All of this is evidence of our lack of power in comparison to the kind of power that only God has. Good morning, Sister Harris. Mm. By God's grace, however, we do have some power. The power of choice or free will. While God is all-powerful, He is also all-loving, and He knows, amen, that true love is defined by the power of choice. True love is defined by the power of choice. We make many choices each day. We make our minor decisions with great 
ease and frequently that we at time forget to say what other influences may impact our decision making. The story and the lesson today is of Israel's first victory in Canaan after crossing the Jordan River. This was a period of transition to advance across the countryside and possess the land. The successful conquest of Jordan River was treated as an important event to be solely undertaken with proper ritual preparation and commemoration. The same was true for Jericho. This conflict, this conflict, the people of Israel were both initiating and intending to engage with the city came with um, unorthodox instruction from God, my Lord. It required they make the right choice in choosing to follow the Lord. This selection has to do less with the conflict of Israel's future conflict with other nations and more with God's holiness and their discipline in choosing him during their conflict. Let me just ask you, amen. Good morning, Rachel Williams. Let me just ask you, if you're in the sound of my, my, my voice, when, when there are conflicts in your life, amen, the selection has to do with the conflict, amen, that's in your life. And I'm talking to us, amen, that's in your life and future conflicts. And how, how do we mm, resolve those conflicts? With other, with other people, with God's holiness and his discipline by choosing him during these conflicts. Do we make our choices, amen, with the help of the Lord or being guided by his spirit, or do we just haphazard it? That's, that's, that's the question that the lesson is asking us right now. How do you, how do you amen, determine, my, 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 how do you determine your decisions and matters in your life? How they determine how the choices that, 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 that you make. And I'm asking you this because this is a question that, that I like for each of us to ponder on this day. That I would like for each of us to ponder on this day. When making choices, making choices in your life, especially difficult choices, how do you, how do you proceed? How do you proceed? Um, do you ask some man for guidance? Uh, do you do you ask? Amen. Those who would, Amen. Practice a divination, or do you pray? Do you pray and ask God for guidance, and direction? Let me just give you a secret. If you trust God, see when it comes to choice making, sometimes it's like standing at the crossroad. So like, like, and, and you're wondering, you're wondering, you're wondering whether to go to the left or go to the right. You're wondering. And if you're, if you're in Christ Jesus, if you're, if you're in Christ Jesus, if you allow him, and I'm going to get to the lesson, if you allow him, amen, the Bible says, amen, he will direct, amen, your feet in the path of righteousness. So first choice you need to make. Amen. Before you even, amen, uh, before you even make an inch towards the problem that you're facing, your first choice, your first choice is to go to God in prayer. Amen. That's what Martise would say. Pray and ask God to lead you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Allow his will to be done. Allow his will to be done. Pray and ask him. Amen. I talk to God about it. Mm -hmm. I've been guilty of getting impatient and not waiting for an answer. And that's what we do. Um, we, we, uh, most of us, and I won't say all of us, but, but a lot of times we are guilty. Sister Amanda McGee, good morning. We, we call on God, call on God, but we don't wait for the answer. Or because, and this is big, especially in day and time now in local churches, because of God, because of who the Lord chooses to send your answer by. Mm. If he should happen to send your answer by Johnny May, and you can't get along with Johnny May, you can't stand Johnny May, 
you you miss the answer that God sends you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get to the lesson. But I, each of you remember the story of the lady, and it's an old story. Um, I don't even know where it come from, but I've heard it several times. The old lady was, was preparing for Jesus, cleaning up and throwing out and washing down and sprucing up. And um, this old lady come by, asked for a piece of bread. She sends the lady away. So I hadn't got time for you. Uh, sometime later, an a old ragged man come by and asked for a hand out. And she, um, she sends him away and says to him, Amen, I, I, I don't have time to be bothered with you. I don't have time to be bothered. Somebody said, well, would you prepare a meal for the sick, just a bowl of soup? And she said, I don't have time to prepare soup. I'm waiting for Jesus. Well, finally, Jesus shows up. And she wondered where has he been. He was promised to warn. He said, well, I came. He said, that was me, that old lady that came and asked for a piece of bread, and you turned away. That, that raggedy man, that, the beggar, you turned him away. So listen, brother, don't, don't let us get so busy. Don't let us get so busy that, amen, being, being religious, amen, don't let us get so busy being religious that we forget, amen, that first and foremost we're Christian. This first outline, an angelic encounter, Joshua 5, 13 to 15. I'm going to get in this lesson because, I, I, amen, I, I don't want to be too long on this lesson. Mm. Jesus is always there. Yeah, I, I, we used to sing a song. Nobody sang it much now. Reach out and touch him as he goes by. He's waiting. He's waiting. Our lesson, our lesson, making wise choices. The first outline is an, an, angel, an, an angelic encounter. Joshua 5, 13 through 15. Amen. He may not come when you want him, but he is always on time. I don't care when he get there. It's going to be on time. Absolutely. Good morning, Deacon Countryman. Amen. Uh, an angelic encounter. Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was, was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him, said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversary? Mm. Verse 14. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I come now? Am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and say unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? My, my, my. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Here's an encounter. Here's an encounter. Joshua Amen. Have crossed the children of Israel have crossed the Jordan River. Miraculous. Amen. For they didn't cross it like they did the Red Sea. And I won't get into all of that because now they are in the land of Canaan. They are in the land of Canaan. The first obstacle, amen, is the city of Jericho. Is the city of Jericho. Jericho is in the way. Joshua now ponders. Ponders what what, 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 how, how are we going to do this? What do we do now? And as he, hallelujah, is meditating or pondering what to do, um, he sees this man. He sees this man. This man is standing by the wall. And Joshua sees him, and he has his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua runs now. To the man and says, Amen. And I'm kind of paraphrasing, putting it in my own words. Uh, uh, I see you standing here with your sword in your hand. Fight on. That's what we would say. Uh, and I want to know. I want to know. Amen. Are you with us? Or are you with our enemy? The man that got the sword in his hand says to Joshua, I ain't with neither one of them. I, I, I'm from the Lord. And Joshua immediately recognizes mm, that he is an angelic being. When God show up, amen, 
in your bedroom some night? Will you acknowledge that it's God? Or you wonder what the world is going on? Joshua immediately, amen, acknowledge this, amen. Let me read, let me read, let me read that, know it, the exposition to this lesson. Because this is a good lesson. Mm. My mind. By Jericho, Joshua lifted his eyes and suddenly a man appeared standing before him, sword drawn in hand. This was threatening to Joshua. And he questioned the man about his loyalty, um, not recognizing the man as an angel. The stranger did not answer Joshua's question directly. With his no, he was, he was stating that his entry was not the same as Joshua. My, my. That's what I was saying. Instead, he asserted something far superior. He was the commander of the Lord's army. Now, that's powerful. When, when you get in trouble, when you get in trouble. So, then brother, I, I, I don't want to get preaching because I got to preach at 1130. Um, God sends the head of, amen, his angelic army to your rescue and your rescue. The thing about it, the thing about it, I don't want to get ahead of the lesson, the thing about it, when God sins, and we love to talk about God will fight your battle if you hold your peace. Yeah, he will, but 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 will you let him? Will you let him? Mm, my, my, my. Did I think? Joshua was, uh, let, me, let me go back and read. Joshua recognized this man's authority, prostrated himself on the ground and worshiped, asking a question. He knew he was in the presence of a superior being. Joshua humbly, amen, inquired about a message for him. Amen. Uh, pray for guidance. The flesh wants to take over sometimes. We have to learn, amen. Mm. We have to, of his word, and grow with in grace that he will lead us. He Still working on me. Amen. God always sends us his very best. Yes, he does. God, God, doesn't ne God never has step. But what happens, amen, a lot of times when God sends his very best, amen, we don't recognize it. You've been wrestling and toiling all night, and all of a sudden, amen, God, as is, is, is the late brother Joe May would say, God comes in your bedroom, he slips in your bedroom. And when God slips in your bedroom, amen, bring you your answer. How do you handle it? What, what do you do? What the, let me, let me, let me. Joshua, amen. Mm. Joshua humbly inquired about a message for him. With this response, Joshua demonstrated his vulnerability, amen, wherein he recognized his own inferior position and a readiness to serve. Joshua needed to be able to, Amen. To recognize, amen, when he, when he saw in God's presence and when to trust in him. The commanders directed to Joshua, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Sisters and brother, amen, when you enter into the presence of God, amen, let, let me just, amen, say even when you're coming to the house of God, when you're coming to church, when you come in church, you don't have to take off your shoes, but how many know you're on holy ground? The minute you set step foot on this parking lot, you're on holy ground. Doesn't matter where you attend church at. Amen. I, I, I don't care if it's New Mount Zion. If you step on, amen, the grounds of New Mount Zion, you don't have to get inside the building, amen, for you are on holy ground. So Josh, Joshua recognized it. Oh, this is somebody's big this amen i'm i'm so i'm so in fear so he fall down prostrate stretches out on the ground and worship at the feet of the angel my lord now let's see let's see what let's see the news the angel brought on because I'm, I'm i'm rushing uh if you got a question please send it to me in the comments i will acknowledge amen good morning sister monique bright amen congratulations on your wedding anniversary hallelujah on your recent wedding anniversary uh marching about Excuse me. Joshua chapter 6. Uh, let me see. See how many minutes I got. Amen. Good morning, Sister Gross again. 
Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Got a few minutes. Okay. Let, let's look at marching around. Now, now, this is so simple. This is, this is, amen. This is, hallelujah. Mm. God, 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 sometimes God calls us to do something so simple. It's so simple we think it's foolish. And a lot of time, a lot of time, Deacon Moore, because we think it's foolish, we fail to follow through. Amen. We sometimes seek out an answer from, amen, one place while God sends it from another. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we looking a lot of time in the wrong place. Let me finish this list. Amen. This second outline, marching round about Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. And I like this passage. This is one of my favorite passages. It's so simple. Now, Joshua was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. And, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of El. And ye shall compass. Now, this, look, pay attention. And I try to read slow. Amen. I try to read so we can understand it. So y'all help me. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Even when God bless. Even when God bless you, you still got to stay in your lane. That's what this says. That's what I, and and in, the, in this, here, here's, here's, the, here's the message that the angel, amen, the captain of the angelic army says, amen, to Joshua. Joshua asked him in the first outline, Joshua asked him, amen, what word are you bringing me from the Lord? And here's what the angel said to Joshua. Here's what the Lord, amen, says for you to do, Joshua. He says, and this is this outline. I might not read it all. He says to you, get the children of Israel up. Amen. Every day. March around the wall. Now, there's, there's something I want you to note. And it's in, the, it's in the exposition of the lesson. But look at, look at verse, verse 4. And it's not verse, verse 4. Seven priests. Seven trumpets. Seven days. Seven times around seven acres. Yo, 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 make your note. Make your note. And the thing, the reason I the reason I point that out, seven is that number of completion. So this is what this is what this is what the angel says to Joshua. Get up every day and get all of the children of Israel and march around. The city, march around the wall of Jericho. March around the wall of Jericho. Now, now you gotta know, you, you, you gotta know, this is this, the thing that makes this so powerful. Mm. Jericho was a city with a double wall. The wall around the city of Jericho, Jericho basically sets on seven, seven acres of land. Uh, and, and, and the wall around the city of Jericho was, was doubled. And and the walls were 15 feet apart. And on the wall, on the wall, amen, sometime there was houses. Y'all remember Rahab the harlot, the harlot. Houses are on the wall. So so the Lord said, the angel says to Joshua, get the children of Israel. March around the city of Jericho once a day for six days. Don't make a sign. Don't make a sign. Don't make a sign. Mm. Glory. 
Hallelujah. But, but, amen. On the seventh day, on the seventh day, ye shall come past the city. You shall go around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpet. Now, I, I, let me see what I'm going to get into the, to, the, to the next outline. Amen. Good morning, Sister Lewis. Um, get into the next outline. On the seventh day, now you got to remember, this, is, this will confuse. Amen. Amen. Get up and get this 800,000 folks and march around the city of Jericho once a day for six days. Seven days, get them up early. Get them up early in the morning. Let me, let me, I, amen. Yeah, I, mm. Amen. The prevalence of the number seven, which occurs four times in verse four alone and 14 times in, in the chapter, is an indication of the ceremonial dynamic. The reference to the solemn processional and the number seven emphasizes the completeness of God's victory on Israel's behalf. Seven, the, it symbolizes, amen, the completeness of God's victory. Seven is a number of completion. Compl number, number of completion. So, so here's, here's what I want you to do. He says on, on, on day number seven, day number seven, march around the wall seven times. Seven time. Now, on the seventh time, I'm going to give you the victory. Now, sisters and brothers, sisters and brothers, take this pandemic. Take this pandemic. God has sent, amen, hallelujah, amen, a, 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 a thing that's pointing to the end of the pandemic, pointing to the end of the judgment on this nation. How are you going to act to it? Amen. He, God has sent it. God, and that's some of what we're talking about. How, amen, if we're going to get out of this pandemic, and the reason I'm going to this is because look what happens, amen, when they goes around the wall seven times, amen, and there is a long blast on the horn. Let me read the next outline. Let me read the next outline. There's a long blast on the horn, amen. The city falls down flat. People are saying, amen, mm. when, the, when, look at verse 5. When they go around seven times, the wall fall, there is a shout of victory. My point is, when this pandemic is over, and even before it's over, somebody needs to shout. Amen. Cheryl, somebody needs to shout. Doesn't matter your circumstances. Amen. If God allow you to, to, to survive this pandemic, verse the next outline. Amen. This is this is such a there's so much in here and I can't Amen. Amen. The, the third outline, seven last time. Joshua chapter six, verse fifteen and sixteen. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawn of the day, compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. Mm, my my my. Came to pass. At the seventh time, when the priest blew, amen, with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, shout, mm, for the Lord has given you the victory. Somebody, somebody, somebody under the sound of my weak voice, amen, amen. God has given us a victory, amen. The victory, amen, is coming. And when it comes, we ought to be in a position to shout. It might not be the pandemic. It might be something else in your life that God is moving you past, moving you beyond. Every victory, every victory, every time God gives you a victory, there ought to be some celebration. Amen? Hallelujah. The, this episode is initiated with, it came to pass just before dawn, the people rose, I'm reading from the exposition, the people rose early and marched around the city like they had for six days. The actions were, the same, but on this day, they were executed seven times. The second half of verse 15 indicate it was only on this day that this happened. The marching around on the seventh day is described with greater haste than the other day since, since, since the story's climax quickly approaches. Joshua commanded the people to shout. When the priest gave a long, gave one long sustained blast on their horn. Verse 16. And once again, once again, 
the already accomplished fact that the Lord had given Israel the land. Amen. Israel. And, and, and here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. God have already given you the victory. God, let me, God, whatever you are in, God have given you the victory. Receive it. Claim it. Go get it. God has given it to you. Mm. My, my, my. And when you go get it, when you go get it, don't forget to celebrate the victory. Don't forget to celebrate the victory. And the thing that I want to point out about, about, about what I read is because I'm, I'm, I got one more little outline, one more verse to read, and then I'm going to be closing the lesson. Amen. Don't forget, amen, to shout. We have to obey God exactly how he commands. Praise God that Joshua did this and walked steadfastly, amen, into the victory. It's so simple. So simple. Follow the instructions. So simple. How in the world, amen, Joshua marched, how, how in the world marching around, let me just, let me just come to Ashburn, or, or to, to St. Luke or to Dawson, march around this building. You march around it till you drop. But the thing is, this was what God said. Obey, obey. March one, one, one time for six days. And on the seventh day, seven time. Let out a shout. Outline four. Joshua chapter six and twenty. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. All the people shouted with the great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him. And they took the city. Every man straight before him. There's so much in this. There's so much in this. Oh, there's so much in this text. Um, one of them is, is, amen, seeking God, seeking God, seeking God when you are, amen, in trouble, seeking God when it seems like the task or the journey before you is impossible. Seek God when, amen, it seems like your, your enemies and your foes are encamped all around you. You can't go to the right. You can't go to the left. You can't go far. You can't seek God. Seek him in prayer. And when God gives you your answer, I don't care how foolish it seems, obey. That's all Joshua did. So just, he didn't argue with he didn't argue with that angelic host. The angelic host said, These are the instructions that God told me to give you, Albert Pierce. I want you to march, amen, around, amen. I want you to march around the city. Once a day for six days. Joshua didn't argue around talking about that don't make no sense. That's what we do. That's exactly what we do. When God gives us something, even, even, amen, in church, when God sends us a message, our first, our first thing is, I ain't doing that. Hey, amen. If anybody, anybody come through when you were converted, when you can, were converted, the Holy Spirit got all over you, amen, and you got, amen, you got foolish in the spirit, you begin to say, I ain't telling nobody this, but you couldn't hold your peace. All it is, amen, is obeying. Obey. That's, that's all that happened in this lesson. God sent Joshua an answer to his problem. Amen. It's what would seem like to us a foolish answer. Joshua obeyed it. Then, 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 and, and that's what we do. That's what we do in church. That's what we do in church. We're talking about we're glad to get back in church, but we don't obey the messages that God sent us in church. And, and because we don't always obey the messages that God sent us, and they don't always come from the preacher. It might come from Bessie Lou telling you about, amen, what she's gone through and what God has brought us through. It might, might come through the song that Jimmy Lee sang, but still God sends it. Amen. Uh, read it. Read it. Let me get through. I'm, I'm, I'm finished with the lesson. I, I got. To, I, I, I'm at the point of closing. I'm at the point of closing. Remember. Remember it. That's. I'm reading now. It is when times are the most difficult, and the circumstances seem insurmountable, that we must rely on God to provide a way through. Doing so may require at times suspending the logic of our so-called better judgment and trusting mm -hmm, in the one who renders judgment. Following God's wisdom will not always make sense in the moment. However, when we trust him, we know that it will turn out for our best. Joshua, 
like Moses before him, was determined not to stray from the Lord his God. By his leadership, Jericho was delivered into the hand of Israel. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Obey. Some stuff, amen. Mm. Some stuff we, we, we ran to obey. When the Lord says, the Lord says, Sister and brother, amen. If you got a sister or brother who's overtaken in a fault, go to him and him alone and tell him his problem. Or it says, you who are spiritual, you who are in the spirit, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness and don't stroll that individual business up and down the highways and byways. Amen. Mm, my Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. My Lord, Joshua and his army marched around the city for seven days straight. Quite simple. They walked. Though following God's direction, they moved their bodies for seven days, contributing to better health. Mm. This week, make a commitment to walk each day. It may be for a short time each day, but get up and get moving. Walk in faith to down the walls of the city of inactivity and its in a, in a inhabitants preventable. Let me, let me read again. Walk in faith to down the walls of the city of inactivity and its inhabitants preventable disease, weight gain, and chronic illness. So this word is to you. If you sit every day, get up and walk. That's what this lesson says. That's, that's your word from, from, from the Lord this morning. Get up and walk. And if you don't walk, get up and move. Them joints aching and stiff. You've been sitting down too long. Get up and move. This is your word from the Lord. This is from the Lord. Now how, you, how you accept it, that's up to you. Get up and move. Walk. It says walk. It says if you walk. A lot of times you can ward off, amen, mm, hallelujah, amen, weight gain. You can ward off chronic illness. How many know? And I, I know if you like me, if you don't pass 50, amen, uh, we don't respect him. When he tell us to go, amen, to the right, yeah, we go to the left, amen. Get up and move. Get up and move. And I know sometimes it's a struggle when you, when you don't pass 50 like I have. Sometimes it's a struggle, even when you get up in the morning. But just think about it. Think about it, sister and brother. Figure out how to move. Figure out how to get at least a little exercise. Figure out, that's what this lesson is about. It's about moving and obeying God. It's about obeying God. That's all this, that's all this whole lesson is about. Joshua's back was against the wall. Joshua's back was against the wall. Didn't know what to do. Amen. But God sent him an answer. And I'm here to tell you, if you, amen, follow God's instruction, one instruction in this lesson for you today, two things that I want to say to you, move. That's the first thing. Get up and walk. This lesson says get up and walk. The other thing is when God send you a message, be obedient. Our Father in heaven, we thank you now for, for this lesson on this day. Praying that our studying together have not been in vain but that you've opened our hearts and minds, that you've stirred, amen, in our spirit, the need to obey, amen, your will, your word, even regardless of how simple it might seem to us, amen, but we are, we are to obey. And Lord, if we obey your word, Lord knows you'll come to our rescue. Give us the determination to know when you speak to us. And Master, give us, amen, the understanding to know when the word come from you. For all we simply have to do is try the Spirit by the Spirit to know whether or not that word come from you. Bless every person in the sign of my weak voice. And Lord, those who are sick among us, I pray that you would be the doctor. And have us to know, 
We don't have to, amen, run and hide, amen, from Satan. For you say it in your word, when you are converted, I'm going to give you some strength. As a matter of fact, you say it in your word, in the book of Mark, I'm going to give you Mark chapter 16, I'm going to give you so much strength, amen, that you'll be able to walk on serpent, and if they bite you, they will do you no harm. Even if you drink deadly poison, it won't hurt you. Lord, be with us now. Help us to know that, that you've blessed us and that you've given us, amen, a certain amount of power. But my, my main thought out of this lesson, amen, whenever we are in trouble, turn to you. And when you send the answers, amen, let us obey. Above all now, get up and move. This is for your daily help. We do pray and ask in Jesus' name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Y'all be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. Amen. See me at 1130 for worship if you can. Amen.